So hi guys, here we have the Model 3, Tesla Model 3 performance model. Do a bit of a review on it. We'll have a bit of a look around the car. So as you can see the car, it's really, really similar to the standard edition. They do have slightly nicer wheels. You get those super cool red little calipers on there. You get your little black, little aerofoil on the back. And you do get your cool insane badge. The insane insanity mode on there. Other than that, very, very much standard, standard spec. It just looks like every other Tesla Model 3. So they are, in my opinion, a nice looking car. It's a personal choice, as with everything. So let's have a look in the back of the car. How are you getting this thing? Put it in there. Again, it's just your standard Tesla. You've got a bit of space in there. Same, it's exactly the same as all your, your other Tesla Model 3s. It is nice. You've got your button here to, to shoot your boot. So you don't even have to do it yourself. Just press a button. Isn't that nice? Okay, let's have a look on the inside. Did you see that? When you press the door, the window goes down a little bit. When we get in the car, the interior on here on the performance model, you do get these cool little things in the back, in the, in the seats. That little, in what do you call it? That badging is the infinity badging on it super cool other than that everything's pretty standard in this car exactly the same as your standard model 3 you know, your phone charging your little pockets the seats are a little bit more more shapes to you so more like your bucket seats so they'll hold you in place when you put your foot down and thrash this car it's a really really crisp look inside your car looks nice I like the really really minimalistic look personally I find that just has a really luxurious feel in it so I know this it's definitely my my own opinion on that one definitely interested in your thoughts I like the seats aren't they so cool they do feel pretty solid to me it's got all the functionality on here on in the this performance model you have all these options where you have the chill mode standard insane mode ride and handling you can muck around with this you can customize this track mode so you can customize all these settings here stability off understeer oversteer all of this stuff you can it's all this post drive cooling save dash cam for laps isn't that super cool so lots of cool functionality let's have a look in the back So in the back of the car, you've got your little screen at the back. Isn't that cool? Isn't it cool? So nice little screen. How do we turn this volume off? You can adjust all of the heat in the back. Oh, sorry, all of the fans in the back here, which is a nice little setting. You've got heated seats, which is pretty cool. You can change the radio here. You can press this and there's some a few games on it. That'd keep all the kids happy in the back. It feels really really airy because of the because of the roof. All these little buttons here so you can hook something onto it. And your lights there. All you need to do is push your fingers across them and they turn on and off. Which is nice, nice little setting. And to open and open and shut your doors, you just got your button there. Nice. So on the whole, it is a pretty nice looking car. 
Is it worth the $85,000 that you've got to pay for this thing? Well, for the speed, it definitely is, because there's not, not a lot else that you can get that does 3.1 seconds not to 100 for this, for this money. Here we are, we're in Brisbane in Australia. This car, on the inside, it's so, so similar to the just a standard Tesla, the standard Tesla Model 3 or the other front wheel drive, sorry, the standard rear wheel drive or the, the all wheel drive model. There's not a lot of difference on the inside. The main difference is just some of the functionality, given you functionality on the vehicle in relation to you can put it in insane mode and you can have this different sports or standard, st standard ride and handling. The speed of it is just ridiculously quick. It's just insanely quick. So the responsiveness of this car is incredible. Absolutely incredible. What can I say about the car? I find the car really, really sleek on the inside. I find it really, really minimalistic. I think it's quite a luxurious feel. Some people don't feel it. Some people don't think that way though. Um, interesting to have your thoughts on it. What I will say is it drives incredibly smooth. It's so, so smooth and definitely responsive. I mean, if you put your foot down hard on this car, you literally, you can, you can go incredibly quick in such a such a, such a short period of time. I think the not to not to 100 kilometers an hour or not to 62 miles an hour in this stands at 3.1 seconds, which is that is in the realms of a supercar speed. I think that's similar to a number of your Ferraris, your Porsches, or your Bugattis. So this is a insanely quick car. And for the price, these in Australia retail for 85,000. So for what you're getting, it's a pretty quick car. It's a, in my opinion, pretty nice car. I really, really do like it. Uh, I do like the screen here, where you can just see all the cars around you. You see everything that's going on around here, which is pretty cool. What else can I say about this car? It's pretty nice to drive. So guys, just some of my observations driving the Model 3 Performance. It is just insanely quick, but you can't use, you know, if you're in the middle of the city like we are right now, you can't use any of the speed whatsoever because the second, you know, as, as, as quickly as you put your foot down on the accelerator, you've got to back off immediately because you're literally, you've got up to Six, you know, the speed limit here is 60 kilometers an hour, so literally you're up to 60 kilometers an hour and a half a second. So you don't benefit from the, you know, when you're doing any city driving, you definitely don't get the benefit of the insane mode on this vehicle. But it is really, really cool. It is cool. So as I say, when you, if you compare this to the, you know, the standard Model Three or the all, all the long way, sorry, the um, the long range Model 3. And if you're just driving in the city, there's probably not a lot of reason why you would spend an extra 27,000 more from the base model to go into the to go to the performance model. So it's probably not not a lot of need to spend that money if you if you're just driving around the city. It's only if you you want to have well the end of the day I suppose if you want to have that super cool feeling of having the fastest car of course that's pretty awesome I love how I do like the the display on it where you can see all the vehicles coming around it well you can see all the vehicles and all the people around you I think that's a pretty cool little feature it's my own personal preference to it you do have to get used to You've got to get used to all the functionality of changing everything on here on the on your big iPad screen. 
but yeah, you get used to it. You can see it's cool all these little functions here where you where you adjust all of the airflow going inside the car. It is pretty cool. You've got your cooled seats, cooled or heated seats, rather, rather nice. Very, very nice. It's got all of your apps and all that malarkey on here. See all the cars around you. That dude, right on the back side. So, is it worth spending 85 grand on this car? Well, if you're wanting super speed, it's pretty cool. Or if you're just wanting a nice everyday run around, it's probably you're probably best just sticking with the with the standard edition, which is 58 grand in Australia. So, do you spend 58 grand on the standard one, or do you spend 85 on the top spec one? Well, what do you get for the extra money? Well, for the extra money, you get a slightly nicer interior. Uh, you also get the ability to customise a lot of settings on the car. And you get far more of a coolness factor in it. It is just a super cool car. So from that perspective, it is nice. It's definitely, definitely nice. Yeah, what's your thoughts? So we're just taking the car back now after having taken it for a bit of a spin. It's in the insane mode. It is ridiculously quick, this car. I do like it, I definitely like it. Like you say, you don't... It's really, really hard to express how it feels like in this car when you're putting your foot down on a video. Because it's just so quick and it kicks you into the back of the seat. It's a nice car. I personally think it's a really, really nice car. And I would, um... I think I would buy it. I would definitely buy it. I'd pay the extra money for it for the insane mode. I think it... It's not worth it from a financial perspective for what you for your what for the extra 20 is that 27 grand that you're having to pay for just the functionality on it is it really worth it probably not if you if you've got your sensible hat on but this is not this car is not about being sensible it's got nothing to do with being sensible at all it's about just having something really really fun and super super cool to drive so if you want it to be sensible, go for a cheaper model. If you wanted something incredibly fun, then this car is awesome, absolutely awesome. You know, it gives you an ability to, as a, an average, average person, have a car which is a supercar speed, which is just really, really cool, isn't it? Super, super cool. I mean, who would have thought that? 20 years ago that you could buy a supercar speed car well what do you think guys will you get one give me your comments below and thanks for watching